Welcome to part four. We're going to take a look at some Axiom Fire setups. I know, finally. This, this is probably why you're even watching and are here in the first place. The first fire setup, we're going to take a look at the fire that is directly on the character himself. And then later, we're going to go through the other generic fire setups that are populating the environment. All right, so let's look at the sword fire example at the top here. I'm going to show you the Solaris part first, and then we're going to dive into SOPs here uh, where the simulation was created. So once the simulation is cached, we just bring in our BGOs and set our primitive path here. You can see the primitive path reflects our hierarchy, sort fire volume, and so on. Uh, after that, we just set it to an assembly just to make things a bit more neat and tidy. And then we uh, also save out our USD pad. As you remember before, if you don't have this, the sub layer is going to complain. Everything's still going to work. It's just going to complain. And also, like we saw here, if you then want to, oops, uh, if you then want to export anything uh, to USD or use layers, uh, you also need to uh, save your path properly. On the right, we are sub layering our material. And just like we saw with the mega scan example, we are doing the same thing here. Uh, Sublayering our material. Keep in mind all the paths need to reflect. So you can see sword fire. We're saying sword fire MTL, which means that it's going to bring it under sword fire MTL. And then we are assigning it to the sword fire. And again, this is the sword fire. A lot of uh, sword fires. So if anything here is not properly named, it's not going to work because it's not going to bring it. Uh, under the right hierarchy. And if this is not named properly, it's not going to know which geometry to assign it to. Uh, this essentially can also be like this because we only have one material. And what else? Just a bit of uh, house cleaning here, also setting it to an assembly and saving out the, the USD path. The material itself is quite simple. So, and again, you're going to be getting this file so you can check it uh, by yourself, but I showed all of this in our uh, Axiom Fundamentals workshop already, how to render out fire, how to create these shaders. But the only trick here is that you create this uh, inverse kind of shader technique where you then use a small portion of the actual uh, source range and it's it creates those dark spots that we are used to seeing in fire. So maybe seven, maybe maybe six was working for us. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So that that's that for the Solaris part. Now if we jump into if we jump into the sword fire. Uh the sword fire stay uh the uh, the SOPnet. So all the simulations and all the setups here were done just using a SOP create. So everything is done here instead of in actual uh, in the actual SOP networks. So here, the first thing, we bring in our geometry. And in this case, it was set as a VDB surface. So we just have to convert it to regular geometry and then do a pyro source where we create our density, temperature, and burn. We don't need burn, so I'll just remove it. And this is just scattering points on the surface. Then adding some noise to our density, which is going to make it look, uh, oops, that was a bit weird, uh, like that. So that's kind of the noise pattern. And then here on the right, uh, Hydra, they have their own proprietary no no uh, nodes and tools and um, OTLs. That they were using. So what this does is essentially it just creates a mask based on these points. You can do the same thing by creating a mask from geometry based on a distance like so. And then you just say multiply my mask, multiply my density by the mask, and you're going to get the same result like so. You can see that's what's happening. And then if you want to add more geometry, you just merge another sphere here. Spheres, what, what are we are previewing something here? Just gonna remove it. And put the sphere a bit more. Uh, 
maybe here. So, rasterize it. So you can see that's kind of what's happening. You can then select which areas you want to mask. And then there's a neat trick because um, we only have, we do have temperature and we have density, but on the density, we created this um, attribute noise. So what we can do is just use the density and uh, push it to temperature. So now even our temperature is also going to have the, the noise applied. All right. So once we have that, we cache it like so, and then we plug in our Axiom solver. And away we go. So that's uh, the simulation is going to be obviously very fast, super quick uh, in this case. And we're not doing anything fancy here. Very basic settings. Everything that we already covered in the uh, Axiom fundamentals, just applying basic disturbances, turbulences, uh, outputting density temperature, and that's pretty much it. Um, again, you're going to get this file, so you can check it for yourself or check the Axiom fundamentals to see uh, how to create different fire setups or examples. So once we have that, we're going to cache it. Like I said, it's going to be pretty quick to cache. And then we that's pretty much it. Then we take this cache and we plug it into a this uh, volume volume node. Right. So this is where we find the file and this is where we set our hierarchy. And that's uh, that's all there is to it for our sort fire.